In this tutorial, we will be reviewing the camera properties in the render mode. These examples here show how to capture renders which have the visual effect similar to a single lens reflex camera, or what you might think of as a photographer's camera. I'm going to be using this project here to help us with most of this tutorial. By default, the Clo camera is set up to focus on the entire scene. What I've done here is I've hidden the object browser. And now we're going to look at the default camera properties in Clo. As you can see, the field of view is set to 15. What this means is, is that if you were to look at this from above, and look at this particular example, the field of view would be about 15 degrees left to right. If I change this to something, say, 55 degrees, or what might be considered a wide-angle lens, as you can see, it opens up the area that the camera is seeing. But what you see is actually different. The subject for lack of a better word, is a bit distorted. As you can see, there is some extreme, almost stretching happening in all directions. I often change this to 25 or 30, depending upon what I have going on, to give me a more realistic visual in terms of how the scene is set up. The next thing we have is view orientation. Now, honestly, I would probably always just leave this on spherical. Because what will happen here is that these numbers will change based on how you move your mouse up and down, left to right, and zoom in and out. The other option would be absolute. But you would have to input the numbers for both the absolute horizontal and vertical shift. The next option is what's called clipping plane. The default measurements here are 10 for near and 100,000 for far. That means that the nearest thing that you are going to be able to capture is 10 millimeters from you. The furthest is 100,000 millimeters. So if you wanted to change these, you could, um, again, the near clip plane would be the nearest distance that the camera can capture. The far would be the furthest distance the camera can capture. Now, if we go into the physical camera, it says render only, which means you will only be able to see the effects of it while you are in the render mode. In the physical camera, you have your exposure, which includes ISO, F number, shutter speed, white and white balance, as well as depth of field. Let's start with ISO. The ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor or film to light. The higher the ISO number, the greater the sensitivity to light. Whereas a lower ISO number, the sensor or film is less sensitive to light. So if we look at this chart here and we see the ISO 100 number, this has a low sensitivity to light, low noise, higher quality. Here is an example of that. If we go back to this chart now, we will see that as these numbers get higher, you have a higher sensitivity to light, more noise, and lower quality. And here is an example of that. The next thing is what's called the F number. The F number is the aperture, or the opening, that lets in the light into the camera. As the numbers increase, the opening gets smaller, and each increment halves the amount of light entering the camera. The depth of field increases as the aperture closes, so that objects that are at differing distances from the camera can both be in focus. 
When the aperture is at its narrowest, the foreground and background are in both sharp focus. So in this chart here, as you can see, this F number here, 1.4, you have a shallow depth of field. It is brighter and just your subject is in focus. If you go all the way up to F11 here, you will notice that everything is in focus and it is a very deep depth of field but it is a darker picture because that opening in the aperture is smaller. Next we have shutter speed. That actually means the amount of time that your shutter is open and capturing light. The longer the shutter speed, the slower it is. Typical exposure times can range from one second to one one thousandth of a second. Longer exposure times often result in blurry images since the aperture is open longer and any movement is captured throughout the exposure. In CLO, for still images, movement will not be an issue. If we look here at this example, you will see that a one second aperture speed is open longer. The action is blurred and the picture is brighter. At the other end of the scale, one five hundredth of a second, it is a shorter exposure. The action is frozen and the image itself is darker. Next is white balance. This relates to the overall feel in terms of color for your image. In our CLO example here, you will notice that the white balance by default is white itself. If I were to change the white balance, for example, if I use my eyedropper and pick the orange that is on the stripe of the hood, you will see that overall my image shifts a little bit because I am telling my camera that that orangish yellowish color is the basis for what should be known as white. Now I'm going to show you what happens when we make changes while we're in the render window. I currently have interactive render running. I have made my 3D window smaller so that we can see more of our interactive render and I've hidden my object browser so we can see just the property editor. Here's our field of view. If I change this number to 50, from 15 to something that's a little larger, say 25, as you can see what happens is that my field of view opens. To get closer I will have to zoom in a little bit I'll scroll my wheel in a little bit so we can get a little bit closer. Nothing else is changing except what will be changing is my view orientation because of the distance here that is changing. So that has been reset. My field of view is open and I am zoomed in a little bit closer. If I come here now and I turn my physical camera on, you will see that here are all of my options here. A good option here is the focus by left click. And if I hover my cursor, you can see that I get a focus icon, which means that I can focus on any one of these three different avatars. So I'm going to start by clicking on the closest avatar. And what this will redo, I am then going to refresh the interactive render. And now we can begin to see the difference when we focused with our left click. The avatar that is in the front is going to be completely focused and then the, the avatar on the left and in the center are going to be in different levels of focus. 
If I were to now click on the middle avatar, this would refresh my entire render and the avatar in the back would then become the focus. As you can see now, the avatar in the front is out of focus. The avatar to the left is a little less out of focus and in full focus is the center avatar. The final option here in our physical camera properties is underneath depth of field effects. I'm going to check this button and we will have two options. We will have vertical tilt and horizontal tilt. The values here are from a minimum of minus one to a maximum of one. This works by adding the value and pressing return. So the horizontal tilt makes it appear as though your image is flattened out or kind of laying on a table. If I do the same thing with a negative number in the vertical tilt, it's going to flatten it out as well and make it look as though it's on a wall and you're standing close to the wall looking at it. Finally, here is an example using the same project and giving it different settings. If you remember, the default camera properties were ISO 400, F number 8, shutter speed 30. What, I've sh what I'm showing you here is that I have an example A on the left and example B. On the example A, I have focused on the hand of the avatar. I've changed the ISO to 100 and I have left the F number at default and I've changed the shutter speed. In the example on the right, I have changed the ISO to 1600. I've changed the F number to 2 and the shutter speed to 250. And I've also changed the focus from the hand to the avatar's face. So you can see what happens when you change all of these things as it relates to how the light works. The lights themselves are the same in both images. I did not change the light at all. It is going to take some experimentation on your part to get used to changing the camera properties. Along with changing the camera properties, the lighting is going to come into play as well. Whether you use individual lights, the Clo HDRI lights, or third-party HDRI lights. What you can do, should you find a camera setup that you really like, is that you can simply, at the top of the Property Editor, click the Save button, and Clo will save all of your settings here for the camera properties, so that you could open these up in another project.